have you ever thought about the figure of Esther in the Bible and how we can be encouraged by her example today? So, Tom, we've met together now to talk about a number of figures from church history and from uh, the New Testament itself, but I don't think we've actually looked at anyone from the Old Testament that the Mm. church remembers in its regular calendar. And so that's what we want to do today is talk about the figure of Esther. And the church remembers Esther on... The 20... (laughs) That's a great one. I just looked it up. (laughs) The 24th of May, and I don't know why the 24th of May. Okay. So, Tom, tell us a little bit about Esther. Well, she has a book of the Bible named after her. That's probably the first point of reference for a lot of us to remember Esther. But um, the book of Esther itself tells this dramatic story, and we can't go into all the beauties of it. I recommend everyone read it. You can read it quite quickly. It's not too many. I think it's about six, seven pages in your Bible. It's just a great read, isn't it? Isn't it? Oh, yeah. Mm. I just heard someone say their parish put on a play of it some years ago. (laughs) You can imagine that. Oh, absolutely. And there's all these levels of irony and intrigue and Mm. drama. and um, Violence. (laughs) Violence, exactly. All the stuff we like Mm. to um, go out on a Friday night to see. So she is this queen, a queen in Persia. Um, the dating is sort of significant in that it's the time after the Jewish exile. So the people have been dispersed. Um, Jerusalem has been raised flat. They go to Babylon. Um, and then after 48 years, a bunch of them return and they begin to rebuild Jerusalem. Esther is one who didn't return. Mm. She's gone to Persia and, um, and the story sort of picks up in Persia with um, her being raised by her uncle, Mordecai. Mm. And so although we can't go through all the details of the story, just in in outline, what happens to Esther in the book of Esther? Well, she becomes queen. Uh, It's sort of a rags to riches tale, perhaps. She is um, the the king, um, um, Ahasuerus, um, is often how you pronounce it. Um, He sees her for her, her beauty he actually was already married, but he was getting annoyed with his queen. So um, he, he picks up um, Esther instead. Um, so she becomes queen. Mordecai, her uncle, is sort of a top advisor who ends up um, foiling a plot to kill the king. So we're sort of in the king's good books as well. Um, Esther doesn't tell the king she's a Jew. It's an interesting point. She, she hides this. She's a bit coy about it. And as the story goes on, Um, a famed or a a top advisor in the kingdom, um, Haman, orders the king to kill all the Jews, essentially, or to use violence against the Jews. And um, this is sort of Esther's moment. Does she speak up or does she stay silent and hope that this passes and no one finds out that she's Jewish? It's this dramatic crux of the story. Mm. And um, this works, essentially. She speaks up and and her people are... Uh, saved and um, and from memory one of the great ironies at the end of the story is that the bad guy it all sort of comes back on him it and Haman and it's fantastic you know, yeah exactly he um, he yeah, gets just what's coming to him so the very um, what do you call it a, gallows a, a gallows the, the very gallows that um, he was preparing for Mordecai he gets hung on himself but before that just going back to that crux this kind of moment that Esther has um, is when she has to tell the king she is a Jew to try and save the Jewish people. And she doesn't know whether she wants to do this. Mordecai says you have to, and he says this to her. Who knows whether you have not come to the kingdom for such a time as this? (laughs) This is a great sort of poignant statement and one for us to consider when we remember Esther, where we have vocational duties that come to us sometimes that we didn't choose, that we don't want, and yet only we can perform them. Um, Mordecai has all the courage that's necessary. He's willing to tell the king everything, but it's not up to him. It's up Mm. to Esther, only her. She's very reluctant. She doesn't want to do this, and yet she realises maybe this is the moment that I've been called to do, and no one else can do this. And this sometimes happens in our vocations. There's something that only we are called to do. Um, Even though we know someone who's a better teacher or a better spreader of the gospel or... Um, more courageous at standing up to authority figures. None of them have the position that we do. And Esther is a beautiful example of someone who 
rises to the call. Mm. And, um, and the king looks upon her with favour. He hears she's Jewish, reverses the decree, even says, well, Jewish people can now take up arms themselves to um, ward off any um, people who might be attacking them, and indeed the Jewish people do. They kill a bunch of people as well. And um, so she's to this day even um, commemorated in a Jewish feast, the Feast of Purim. Mm. Mm. Makes me think of um, people I talk to sometimes who are struggling with their, you know, maybe Christians in a family that's not Christian or in a workplace that isn't yep. Christian, and, and they often feel this this sense of being overwhelmed by what they what they're called to, and and how you know there's like exactly like you said, there's so many people better suited than me to be in, in this situation, and 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 one of the things that we sometimes talk about is just the fact that. The thing is, you are the one in that situation. Right. You have the relationships. It's, it's your family. It's your workplace. and um, It sucks. Yeah, and it's, and it's difficult. <laughs> and yeah. you know, it's yeah, not yeah. what you want, and yeah. yet it's what God's called you to and, and where yeah. God's placed you. One thing to, to, on that is that Esther doesn't tell her husband her Jewishness at the beginning, doesn't tell the king. I find that interesting even as Christians. Maybe there are tactical times when we don't necessarily wear this on our forehead. We don't come in with all guns blazing, but mm. actually... Wait for the day when it's when we're called upon, where it will actually mean something more. There's no hard and fast rule here, but Esther shows that there was a time for one thing and a time for another, and that courage um, dictates both in a sense. Yeah, yeah. I think about that with people in workplaces and that sort of thing. You know, there's some there's some thinking sometimes that the role of a Christian is to be as upfront as possible and have a Bible yeah. on your desk straight away or whatever it is yeah. to try and to be a witness and, and, and perhaps there's something good about that zeal and yet on the other hand in my experience as well you know maybe there is other wisdom in being a good employee um, being a good friend in a relationship whatever it is and, and waiting for the for the right moment God's appointed time and so when Esther does come to her husband the king she's trembling because if someone approaches the king and he doesn't receive them favorably they're dead. Mm. This is the, just the, the rule, even, even a wife of the king. So she approaches with fear and trembling, and yet he sees her and says, it's wonderful to see you. I'll give you half my kingdom. What is it that you're after? And it's because perhaps she's built this rapport. Um, she knows, he knows she, she, that, that he loves her. Um, she's a person of goodwill. And so here it's time to um, cash in on the goodwill that she's built up. Mm. It's an interesting way for a holy woman to conduct herself. One of the verses that comes to mind for me from, from Jesus is to be as wise as serpents and as innocent mm. as doves. Mm. There seems to me to be a lot of wisdom in Esther's dealings right through the book. Yeah, absolutely. And um, it's a wonderful book, again, to repeat. Worth reading, full of humour, irony, violence, as you say, too. And, um, but in the midst of it, sanctity and a great example for us. Mm. So that is Esther. We should say Queen Esther, remembered by the church on May the 24th. Thanks again for tuning in. If you're not a subscriber here, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell notification to keep in touch. And if you've enjoyed this video, hit the like button as well and share it with your friends. This is Kairos. God bless you.